October 16th, 2020 electronic meeting of the Ann Arbor Transportation Commission. Uh, this meeting is being held electronically to protect public health and safety. Uh, we'll conduct it similarly to an in-person meeting. Public comment will be via telephone only. To speak during the public comment opportunities, please call 206-337-9723 and enter meeting ID 960-2232-8200. Uh, and I'll ask Raymond to please call the roll. Very good. Um, Commissioner Balderrama. Here, calling in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Thank you. And as a reminder, please state from where you are calling. So thank you, Commissioner, for that reminder. Uh, Commissioner Boland. Here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Briggs. Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Brogan. Here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Hadamaki. Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Hull. Here from Ann Arbor. I think we're having some technical difficulties on Raymond's end. My apologies. Uh, my phone call dropped for a second there. I joined by phone so that if my computer drops, at least I can still be connected. This time it backfired and my phone dropped. So uh, let's see. I was at, I believe, Commissioner Hanamaki. And then on to Commissioner Hull, is that where we were? Yeah, I said I was here from Ann Arbor. Okay, thank you. That's right when I dropped off. <laughs> Commissioner Kleinman. Uh, here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Lee. I'm here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Smith. Here from Dexter, Michigan. Commissioner Summers. Here yeah, from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Wannenkopf. Here from Ann Arbor. Uh, Commissioner Hess, here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Hutchinson. Here from Ann Arbor. Uh, Commissioner Margolis sends her regrets. She um, will be absent tonight. Uh, Lieutenant Mike Sherba. see on the call yet, and Commissioner Stupka. All right, uh, Chair Kleinman, we have a quorum. Great, thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna move us along to the approval of the consent agenda. Are there any changes to the consent agenda? All right, is there is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Uh, Commissioner Lee, uh, second, uh, Commissioner Boland. Uh, all those in favor? Physically raise your hands. All those opposed? And the consent agenda passes. Thanks, everyone. Um, moving on to public comment time. This is an opportunity for people to speak for up to three minutes. Raymond, are you going to be timing them or am I going to be timing them? I can time them. Uh, as of right now, I don't believe I see anyone. All right, I'll read the number. Um, I'll read the, the number. Note that, uh, okay, very good. I, I will note that uh, Lieutenant Mike Sherbo was stuck as an attendee, so I just promoted him to panelist. So my apologies, uh, Lieutenant Sherba. Uh, we just got finished with a uh, roll call, so if I could uh, call you out on that, if you could say whether or not you're here, uh, which I hopefully you're here, and where you are uh, calling in from. I am indeed here and from remotely from Fenton, Michigan. Thank you. Um, okay, so. And then uh, com Commissioner, we don't have any other calls. Okay, I'll just read the number real quick and give people a chance and then we'll, then we'll move along. So if you would like to speak a public comment, please call 206-337-9723 and enter meeting ID number 960-2232-8200. Uh, city staff will select callers that have raised their hand using the last three digits of your phone number. In order to raise your hand, 
press star nine on your phone. Uh, you'll hear an automated announcement at allowing you to speak. Um, so I'm assuming we still have no callers tonight. Is that right? All right, great. Um, so we will move right along to business. Um, so this is the resolution to begin discussions with the University of Michigan for 2000 units of workforce housing on U of M's North Campus, an agreement on additional student and employee residential units commensurable with U of M's growth. Uh, so this is an item that was considered by city council back in January and they referred it to a bunch of commissions, I think, including this one. Um, and this is a situation where we've, we've had this happen before. I think the most recent time was with the, there was like a vegetation thing. Um, so something will be referred to transportation commission and we can talk it over and decide if it's, if it feels like something we actually need to talk about in more depth and if we need to vote on it, or if we can just sort of say this feels beyond the scope of the commission and, and move it along. So um, I don't know if folks have had a chance to take a look at that resolution yet. Uh, I'm seeing a hand from Councilmember Briggs. Do you wanna give us a little more context? Yeah, I just wanted to provide a little bit more context for those who weren't listening into the council meeting on this. Um, Councilmember Griswold brought this to city council and um, stated that this was kind of a starting point for point for discussions. Um, and so it got referred to a number of different commissions, energy, transportation, planning, economic development, and I think there might be another one out there someplace. Um, but it's, uh, I suspect each commission is handling it a little bit differently. I've um, been through the discussion in Energy Commission and um, the chair kind of made some recommendations about, you know, minor edits and different thoughts. I said for that commission, I had suggested that, you know, I, I think the ultimate um, composition of this, the end resolution may be very different. Um, so if there's just general thoughts around this, um, even outside, you know, even if folks are thinking about it outside of this commission meeting and they forward them my way, I can compile them and pass them off along to the to the sponsors as feedback, even if it's informally from the commission, I would think it would be probably welcome. Um, we may, obviously we don't, uh, well, the commission can chime in on how, how it may find this to be helpful. Um, obviously, recently we've talked about East Medical Center Drive and relationship of transportation, you know, kind of in that, in that sense, in terms of this is kind of, um, campus to campus bikeways and things like that, in addition to um, uh, commuter behavior coming in and out of the city um, are probably relevant points for the Transportation Commission perhaps to consider. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone have any thoughts or things they want to share in response to this resolution? Uh, yeah, Commissioner Broven. I have a few thoughts. I mean, I think obviously um, having housing available for people to live closer to where they work, I think is relevant to some of what we are talking and thinking about. Um, I have questions about, I think everybody has questions about what is the best way to do that. Um, I have questions about if this is the right way to do that. Um, but I think as far as uh, getting more housing in places where people work, I think that is um, something that I definitely support. Thanks. I'm not seeing other hands or comments, which is suggesting to me that this, I mean, so my first thought was this doesn't feel like something Transportation Commission needs to, should be spending time on. It felt like a sort of a, um, not, not quite the right tool for the job maybe. Uh, so I, I'm comfortable saying, you know, giving, providing that feedback, um, but otherwise saying, you know, Transportation Commission has declined to um, make a 
make a re- make a recommendation on this particular resolution. Um, so uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Wanenkoff. The one thing I would note when sending this back to city council is that a lot of bus service to the north side is on reduced capacity right now. I take the 65 and that's going hourly instead of half hourly as it used to. So just a consideration that we should eventually, I think, be looped in as north side campus should connect to downtown. That's a great point. Councilmember Briggs, does that feel like stuff you can take back? Yeah, so so is it fair to say if I provide feedback to the sponsor that there wasn't kind of a formal input from the commission, but in general um, considerations might be thinking about um, transit connectivity, um, that there is you know general support around um, the concept of increased workforce housing in proximity to you know the campus and the city and you know generally supportive of those goals and and understanding that um you know that's something that the transportation commission generally sees as a as a positive is that kind of yeah. good general feedback okay yes. okay um all right so uh i'm gonna move us ahead to i think next is the north side traffic calming petition, is that right? So um, I'm gonna ask Commissioner Hess to give us an overview of the of this project. Yes, indeed, thank you, Chair Kleinman. So included in your packet is a draft resolution to city council uh, to support additional traffic calming on Northside Avenue. Um, the project proposes a new speed hump and uh, two traffic calming area entrance signs. Um, the good news is this project has received 100% support from the respondents who participated in the process, uh, and it is a relatively inexpensive project compared to some, uh, coming in at a price tag of about $12,000 for that one speed hump and some additional signage. So, um, so we are seeking a recommendation from the Transportation Commission tonight on this item so that we can forward it to City Council. Um, we are scheduled to take this to City Council uh, their first meeting in March, if I remember correctly. Um, and so your recommendation would be reflected therein. Have you ever gotten 100% support? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Have you ever gotten 100% support? No, no. Not to my recollection, at least not in the three and a half years I've been with the city. Um, you know, we just processed one last month uh, for Longman Fairview, and and that enjoyed strong support. I think it was like seventy five percent or thereabouts, uh, but it wasn't unanimous. So this one, this one is, which is, you know, always good to see. Great, yeah. I was I didn't remember ever seeing a hundred percent support support um, before. Did you have a Sorry, the, I think there's a bit of a delay on you, Raymond. So I'm, I feel like I'm missing pieces. Was there a, a presentation on the, like, the design or anything like that tonight? Hey, wait, let me switch over to computer audio and see if that fixes things. And then I will bring up the area plan, which I was actually clicking on, and then my Adobe crashed. So oh, no. I am just another comedy of errors tonight. And let's see if I can get it to work again. It's Mercury and retrograde or something. I feel like I'm ha- I'm ha- I am also having one of these weeks where everything is breaking all the time. And my internet went out as you were talking, Raymond. <laughs> it was a- <laughs> <laughs> it's all around. This is very hard. Did I hear 100% support? Yeah, 100% support, which I amazing. I've never seen that before. <laughs> all right. So hopefully you can see the screen in front of you. I will zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit more legible. Uh, is that coming through? Yep, you're all, it's good. Yes, okay, I got a thumbs up. So um, one thing to note on Northside is Northside uh, already has traffic calming. It was several years ago that that was installed. I don't have the date off the top of my head of when those went in. Um, but Northside um, experiences a lot of cut through traffic, especially traffic that's cutting between Pontiac Trail and Barton. Um, and they've 
ever since that first round of traffic calming went in, they always had a little bit of uh, lingering concern about this bend that's closer to the Barton Drive side. Uh, and so the idea, uh, and the other thing to note is this neighborhood does not have sidewalks. So a lot of the people who walk in the neighborhood are walking in the street. And as people were walking in the street on north side, especially around this corner or curve, um, there was concern that vehicles coming off of Barton were kind of whipping around the corner, perhaps maybe a little faster than they should. So there was a lot of support for a, um, a speed hump at this location, in addition to the four that are already on north side. And then one of the other devices that this will be the first deployment of them is a uh, traffic calming area entrance sign. And what this pretty much says is you are, you know, it's alerting motorists that they are entering a traffic calmed street. Uh, we haven't done these before, so this will be an interesting kind of uh, case study to see how well it goes. Um, we're using a sort of template similar to a parks sign. We're actually going to fabricate them in-house with the help of the parks department. So it'll be kind of a cream colored sign with a green background. If you've ever noticed the signs marking parks, that's what it would be. So it's very similar in nature. Uh, and we're really trying to develop a kind of standard sign that if there's interest for this in the future, it can be replicated. So uh, fingers crossed that goes well. Uh, if this gets approved, then we can kind of put that in our, I mean, it's already in our toolbox, but we haven't deployed it yet. So this will be the first time that we do that. So, so yeah, so this is the overview of the project and um, uh, residents were very receptive to it. So. Awesome. Any questions or comments about this project? Councilmember Briggs. Yeah, um, I was wondering um, if sidewalks are slated anytime for the future. And then um, to, are there, is there been consideration of um, kind of pavement markings in addition to signage that might delineate, um, I know it's not good for these, the winter months, but for the summer months in terms of kind of a different year, entering into a different neighborhood environment. I don't know if staff's discussed that at all. Yes, Council Member Briggs, I, I, let me start with the second one first. Um, all of our speed humps do have um, a pavement marking on them. So you can, uh, I'll pull it back up here for just a second. There's kind of a, a shark's tooth sort of pattern that alerts motorists to um, the approach of the, the speed hump. Things that we will probably do as part of this project is reevaluate if any of the pavement markings on the other speed humps need to be refreshed. Um, so there's a good chance that that just might be part of the preventive maintenance part of it. But it, it's a little hard to see, but you um, can kind of see these little directional arrows that kind of are meant to uh, alert motorists that they're coming up on a sort of changed uh, pavement condition or, or uh, road surface. So, uh, so there are accompanying payment markings associated with those. Yeah. And then I, as to- I just meant more kind of generally kind of indicating something more of like a slow streets environment, just something that was, you know, a little, a little different. I was just, I wasn't sure if that was something that had been ever discussed or not. And then I was going to try to show you our sidewalk uh, prioritization tool. I have that um, open, Raymond. I can get to the right. There it is. Hey, Raymond. So north side is, um, yes. I, say, I can speak to the sidewalk gap if you like. Go ahead. Um, the uh, um, the prioritization of this one in our system falls right kind of in the middle in the medium high range. Um, so it's uh, um, you know it, it's it's one that we would consider for sidewalks. Um, but as as you know, there's many needs around the city. This one hasn't really risen up to the top of the pile yet. So um, it, it's out there and it would be a candidate. But uh, um, we we have a lot of other things on our plate uh, um, ahead of that yet. Okay, thanks. Other questions or comments? I still can't get over the 100% support. That's amazing. 
All right, well then is there a motion to recommend approval of the Northside Avenue traffic calming installation and to forward the recommendation to the city council? Commissioner Hadamaki, can I get a second? I see Commissioner Proven. So all those in favor, please physically raise your hands on camera. All of those, thank you. Yep. All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. All right, thanks everyone. More neighborhood traffic calming. Uh, let's see, next up we have a bylaw amendment. This is a new thing I haven't seen, we haven't done much of. Um, so included in the packet are some suggested changes to the commission's bylaws. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it back over to Commissioner Hess to talk us through those. Very good. Uh, I haven't been able to switch over yet, so I apologize for the continued uh, delay. It looked like I'm a bad dubbed movie. Um, but uh, in the packet are some proposed changes to uh, your bylaws. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the homework guide, uh, a lot of these are somewhat perfunctory in that the Transportation Commission has actually voted on these in the past. Uh, back in 2018, uh, the composition of the uh, commission was changed to include yours truly. Uh, so you may recall there used to be a transportation engineer and I think um, a systems planning representative. Uh, those were swapped out for the transportation manager. Uh, and then in 2019, there was a change um, just allowing for the AAA TA uh, a little bit more latitude to designate uh, staff uh, to represent the AAA TA board or the ride board. Um, so the changes that we're proposing are just to bring the bylaws up to those changes that have already been approved. Uh, when those changes were made uh, back in 2018 and 2019, they were done to the original ordinance that created the Transportation Commission, but we never did a uh, complementary bylaws amendment with it. So this is really just kind of a cleanup exercise. Um, and then the last thing that staff is suggesting is um, a minor change uh, towards the bottom of the bylaws. Uh, for some odd reason, the bylaws specifically indicated that systems planning, which is where Kayla was um, or still is, uh, was specifically identified to staff the Transportation Commission. That seemed a little peculiar for that to be written into the bylaws since that might be a move around a little bit like we're experiencing now. So we pretty much kept most of the language intact, but just pretty much stated that the city administrator will determine, you know, which staff member is going to provide staff support and be the liaison uh, to the commission. Um, but then as Chair Kleiman mentioned, um, this is also an opportunity for you to, if there are any other changes you would like to see to the bylaws, uh, we can make those as well. Um, I will note, again, you may have seen this in the homework, that the bylaws specifically state that we have to take two bites at this apple, um, that anything that's introduced tonight, you have an opportunity to kind of ruminate on it, and then we would take it up for a final vote at the following meeting. So if, if there is a burning desire to change anything out, anything else in the bylaws, now would be a good time to do so. Uh, so then that way we can prepare the final version of the bylaws for action at your next meeting. Thank you. Commissioner Hall. Yeah, so the one change I wanted to mention, I don't have exact language for this, but I know we changed the bylaws to allow AAA TA to appoint all have alternates if uh, the person who's uh, doing the meeting can't uh, come. And I was wondering if we could give that flexibility to all the other uh, entities that appoint their own representative to the Transportation Commission. I mean, the Commission on Disability Issues would have could have used it and I'm, I'm like just yeah also yeah I, I ended up being able to attend that meeting but there was a meeting I wasn't sure I was going to make and yeah it was there was also I've been looking to hand off this position to someone else and they were kind of interested can I try it first and like there's no way to just yeah do that easily so just was wondering about that. So are you saying that it would be, so that it would be possible to have alternates for all of those things so that it'd be easier for someone else to, to attend on your behalf? Yeah, to step in, yeah. Just, just the same as what we did for AAATA, but for all the others too. It, yeah. it, it would, I brought this up at the time, but they said, oh, we're just, we're doing, we're going with this. That just, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Commissioner Boland. Just where is the amendment for ATA? ATA, I haven't found it. It's so. Let's see. In the PDF, it's page twenty. If you're looking at the giant homework guide PDF that we got, it's page twenty-four of the PDF, and it's Article Four, the bottom half of the page. It's marked as page two because it's. Does that make sense? Yes. I am. I'm open to that change. I don't. Oh, thank you, Raymond. Um, I don't know if there's like rules about having alternates that would prevent us from doing this, but it seems to me that that would be having, having more flexibility would be a good thing. And I know I was thinking about it for um, the University of Michigan and public schools reps, um, but it looks like they like, it doesn't seem like they have to be appointed. They can like, they could just show, send someone different. Um, uh, yeah, Commissioner Hadmacki. Sorry, I forgot to raise my hand. Um, I, I wonder if the distinction is whether or not the member is, is a voting member. Right. So I think that I think uh, that's right. So for okay. the voting member, for the voting members, we would need to change the bylaws to allow them yeah. to appoint alternates. I was curious about doing that for the non-voting members. It looks like we don't have to, but perhaps we could communicate to those entities that they could be sending alternates and that we would welcome alternates, because I do think it would be helpful. Um, to have representatives from uh, from U of M and from the schools. Okay, I just wondered if there is a, an yeah, actual issue made, with um, having a, a voting somebody voting that wasn't appointed. I, I wasn't sure if there's something above transportation that I don't know. Well, uh, if they're appointed as an alternate, I think that would. Yeah, right. So we would still have to appoint them as an alternate. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Raymond. Yeah, and and as um, Commissioner Smith can attest, um, the Triple ATA board actually, we got direction from our legal department to make sure that the appointment is um, specific, right? The idea is that they're, you know, it's not just a, a free for all and anybody shows up. So. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Smith can attest that you all may recall this. Uh, Forrest Yang had stepped, tried to step in in a meeting not too long ago, uh, but had not yet been officially designated by the Triple ATA board to represent the Triple ATA. So we couldn't count him towards quorum. That was fine. We still had quorum. We still it didn't change any of the vote structure. But I would probably suggest to Commissioner Hull's point, I would probably suggest a similar approach um, that. If you have been designated by your official body to represent that body to this commission, uh, if there is a desire to have alternate that 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 board identify who those are, so yeah. then that way we have it on record and know that if somebody shows up, they're yeah. showing up in an official capacity. Well, I think the intent and also the clause in there for Triple ATA is that they may appoint one or more alternates. It's not saying that anyone can show up and represent them. Yeah. So, so are others? A, oh, I just realized I've been unmuted. Sorry. Go ahead, uh, Council Member Briggs. Yeah. Just while we're on this section, um, in the non-voting member section, it might be useful to say for like both number one and four, the city administrator or their designee. Um, and number four, the chief of police or their designee. Um, many thanks to Lieutenant Sherber, who has been here faithfully meeting after meeting. Um, personally, I, I would like to say that for the record that I, I am not a big fan of asking people to show up but not counting their votes. Um, so <laughs> I am very grateful for you being here and being open, listening and uh, being available for questions every month. But um, yeah, so at least allowing for their designee officially. Okay. Thanks. Other suggestions on this section or any other sections of the bylaws? Um, yeah, Commissioner Boland. Sorry, you're still muted. So is the proposal to add this clause to um, to three, four, and six, in addition to five, or to, to put in something more general about 
um, at the top. That, um, yeah, it would probably be better not to repeat the same language like four times or whatever. Yeah, we might have to for clarity, um, which I'm fine with. Um, Raymond, maybe you can work with um, the relevant parties to make to figure out make sure the language is right but i think the the sentiment is adding adding that ability to appoint a designee for all of the bodies that appoint someone to to transfer to transportation so disability commission planning commission and triple ata um yeah julie um and city council for oh for city right council. and city council <laughs> But for city council, I don't know, because that link is so important, I, I sort of hate to invite alternates showing up. I, I feel like if we have the same person, it really is very helpful. Yeah, I, I agree. And I believe there's also some kind of thing where council members are free to participate in any commission meeting, as I understand it, if they feel like it, um, in, addition, in addition to the... Um, the appointed the appointed council member they couldn't they wouldn't be able to vote but they can show up um i don't know whether we might feel like that's enough um you know for an occasional absence we haven't had an issue um so i don't know council member briggs what do you think yeah i mean i think unless we changed it at the council level to you know provide an alternate it's really not particularly helpful to okay to add that in here at this point, because um, I there isn't an, you know another alternate that would be approved until next potentially December. I mean, personally, I think it's nice to have when there's only one council member, just kind of ha having consistency and recognition that occasionally you know something is going to prevent that uh, that representative from not attending. Great. Other, yeah. So, so Clement, if I could just get clarification on that last point, is there interest in the city council having an alternate or, okay, thank you. I'm just doing a quick scroll through the bylaws. We also have a change in the miscellaneous section. Uh, which is on page 30 of the full, the big giant um, PDF. If we just want to take a brief look at that. Um, so, oh, here, it's just sort of ex like adding more flexibility, it sounds like to the city administrator in terms of staffing the commission. Yes, that is correct. This is, again, to reflect that change that now that um, Kayla Coleman has transitioned away, before the bylaws read that the systems planning unit shall be the primary provider of administrative support. And so we kept most of that language in place, but it just pretty much says that the city administrator has final discretion regarding staffing and providing administrative support. So um, it, again, it just seems weird to call out a single department um, as that role and responsibility may change over time. Councilmember Briggs. Yeah, just uh, wanted to point out one small typo on the bottom of page two. Um, bottom of page two, is that right? Maybe not. Uh, not the bottom of page two. Um, uh, yeah, it's page two, lower okay? instead of one, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. I can no longer find it apparently, but I'm. <laughs> wherever it was. Um, if you are looking at it, Brett, now. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right, Councilmember Briggs. It's on the bottom of page two. Um, it, there was just okay. a threat. Okay, there it is. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other responses to this? And so we are not, we're not taking a vote tonight. We're going to bring it back next month with these uh, additional modifications to Article 4, and then we'll vote at that meeting. Okay. Very good. Cool. All right, now I have to find my way back to the agenda. There we go. 
Um, so it looks like we're moving on to staff reports. Um, so we have project updates in our agenda materials. Um, and then uh, we're gonna get some highlights now um, from Commissioner S. Very good. Thank you, Chair Kleinman. Okay, so starting at the top, uh, Division Streets. Uh, the big thing to note here that um, an online survey is expected to post in February. Uh, so hopefully in the next week or two, that will be posted and we will share that with you. The, the, this online survey is going to be specific to extending the cycle track south of Packard, possibly all the way to Hoover, um, because this would be uh, require a, a, an amount of removal of parking and kind of a reconfiguration um, that we want We want to go out and make sure we listen to the public uh, and factor that into the final recommendation. And then that would come back to this commission um, because a removal of parking does require council action. Uh, and so, you know, you will be engaged in this process uh, as we move forward. Um, the update on the State Street Improvement Project from William to Huron. Uh, construction is anticipated to occur in two phases, phase one in 2022, between Memorial Day and Labor Day, and then phase two, which is North University to Huron, will occur in 2023. Uh, Broadway Street from Plymouth to Plymouth is scheduled for 2022, and a public engagement meeting is being planned for this project, and of course we will share that with you when it gets posted. Uh, South Main Street reconfiguration, you've gotten some updates on this in the past. Pretty much the biggest thing here is we're very close to launching a survey on that project as well. Uh, again, to solicit feedback on um, what that experience is like for users along the corridor. Uh, and that will be, again, entered into the consideration uh, on the final determination if the reconfiguration between Packard and Stadium is made permanent or not. Um, I did add some language to the bottom of that project description related to crosswalk improvements. Uh, there are several uh, crosswalks that are in dire need of improvement, uh, Keach, Davis, Mosley, and Hoover in particular. Um, what's interesting is the relationship between the road configuration is going to impact what type of crosswalk treatment is uh, needed pursuant to our crosswalk design guidelines. So for example, if we restore the road back to the previous condition, which is the two lanes of traffic in each direction, then an overhead RRFB, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon would be needed because you're crossing uh, multiple lanes of single direction traffic or what we call the multi-threat crash. Um, whereas if it's just a single lane in each direction, which is what we currently have uh, out there today, then we uh, might be able to just do side mounted uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons. So these two projects are kind of joined at the hip, um, but whatever we decide to move forward with, they will kind of be done in unison and in tandem. Uh, and the idea is to finalize all those projects by this summer. So that way by the next fall semester and, and the start of school and everything, we, we have the final configuration in place, whatever that may be. All right, um, 7th Street and Greenview, the biggest update here is that the project has been postponed until 2023, so there's a new timeline there. Uh, this one will probably drop off for a while as there will just be some behind the scenes work that's happening um, and public engagement probably won't happen until later in 2022 or early 2023. Um, East Medical Center Drive Bridge, uh, council did consider a new resolution and it was passed, uh, which removed the resolved clause uh, that required any widening of the bridge to be used for multimodal travel. Um, so as such, um, the city and the University of Michigan are planning to proceed with proposed bridge widening in addition to the rehabilitation of the existing structure. Um, Streetlight implementation. Um, we, you know, we just started the new year, so we can't really boast of a lot of new streetlights that have gone in because uh, we kind of hit the reset button for the calendar year. Uh, but we have 24 requests already in the queue with DTE to put those streetlights in. Um, and 57 outages have been addressed by DTE so far this year. Um, the other thing to note is I think I reported on this last meeting, but council did pass a resolution on January 18th that will require staff to produce estimates, to upgrade all streetlights LED, to scale up connected smart city streetlights, and to report quarterly on known extended outages that um, are out for five days or more. 
Um, there is another resolution that was contemplated related to DTE's reliability and streetlights, uh, but that was postponed for consideration until March. Uh, traffic calming, uh, you've heard on, you've heard about Northside and you heard about Longman uh, Fairview last time. Both of those are going to council in March. Uh, winter sidewalk maintenance, uh, council did pass a resolution on January 18th. Um, and it directed staff to provide estimates on staffing needs and costs to ensure city-owned sidewalks and paths are cleared in a timely manner, um, to prepare code amendments related to sidewalks, to develop a robust education and enforcement campaign, um, implement solutions in the downtown area, along with other partners, uh, and conduct outreach to uh, public schools on clearance of sidewalks adjacent to school-owned properties. And then the last one that I wanted to report on was the American Rescue Plan funding recommendations. So the survey for that effort just closed on Monday, on, Jan on February 14th. Um, there was a final session for the public to ask questions uh, last week, last Wednesday, I believe it was. Um, and right now, I believe staff is uh, going through, coming through all the responses that were received to help formulate a recommendation to council, which is expected to go to council in March. Uh, when that becomes available, I'll share that memo with um, this commission. Um, from what I've heard, there are some positive responses on the Vision Zero implementation strategy. That was one of the projects uh, that was proposed. Um, Miller Catherine is seeing a little less support, um, maybe in part because it's a little bit more geographic in nature. And if you don't use Miller Catherine, it may not be of interest. But the Vision Zero project is more citywide, so I think it's gaining a little bit more traction. Um, but that's not to say I don't know how well those two projects stack up against all the others. Um, those are just the two projects I'm following. Since those are the ones that um, touch the work that we do uh, in the transportation. Um, so I suspect there might be some follow up questions on some of the things I just discussed. Um, and I'm happy to entertain those, maybe with the help of Nick. Thank you. Uh, we can start with Lieutenant Sherba. Just a quick comment on the pedestrian crosswalk safety initiative you mentioned, Raymond. Uh, the department's currently participating in an OHSP grant um, and pedestrian safety is part of that. So we have total control over which crosswalks we wanna enforce and how. And so I think maybe the commission could weigh in on locations and times and things like that, which could be kind of work cooperatively with, with the department to when that comes. It's later, it's later in the year, I think it's, uh, spring, summer, um, when those particular uh, enforcement details will happen. Um, but just putting it out there for everyone to think, kind of think about which locations you might want to see this this take place. Great. Maybe we can get that on onto an agenda um, when it gets like when it's appropriate for us to to have that as a discussion item. That'd Excellent. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Other comments or questions on any of the items? Commissioner Hadmacki. Could you speak quickly to the uh, reason for the delay on the 7th and Greenville project? Is it water main related or, or funding related or? I can, I can field that one. Um, it was primarily, it was not funding related. It was, uh, we, we were running into some delays with various things. The, as many people know, the Sio Church project that was supposed to go last year uh, got delayed until this year. Um, what it really comes down to is we've got too many things going on in the same ballpark at the same time, because um, that project immediately abuts the Sio Church project. And the county also, the County Water Resources Commissioner's Office also has a stormwater detention basin project going on in that same neighborhood. It was just too many things to try to do in the same place at the same time. So, um, so we're holding off until next year for seventh review. Okay. And, 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 and sorry, go ahead. So I was just saying that project was lagging a little bit behind where we wanted it to be in terms of the, uh, the design. And we hadn't really even gone to a public engagement phase on that yet. So all those things combined together led to our decision to move the construction to next year. Okay. Thank you. Council member Briggs. 
Yeah, just a couple of comments and um, potential requests. Um, I guess I was hoping that maybe um, there might be a role for a transportation subcommittee to, to think more about the winter sidewalk maintenance, particularly as it comes relates to code enforcement. Um, I think I could imagine there needs to be sort of a review of of what our current practices and approaches are to code enforcement and, and where that might need to, um, where there's opportunity to build in some flexibility. Um, you know, I would guess I would just ask for you to look internally and see if that would be welcome to, to bring a couple of folks from Transportation Commission to that discussion or, you know, how staff would like to proceed forward with that sort of resolved portion of the resolved clause. Um, and then secondly, I just, I was thinking of bringing this up in, in my liaison comments, but I'll just, since we just touched on it here with your comments, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, obviously the East Medical Center Drive um, Bridge Transportation Commission spent a couple of meetings on this. And I know it's, um, it can be, um, uh, frustrating it to, to see advice um, sort of not followed. Um, I hope that won't be a regular occurrence, but um, occasionally it is going to happen. And, you know, I just wanted to say from my vantage point, thank you so much for the commission for, for spending it. Oh no, we lost you. Oh, we, you froze for a minute. We lost you as you were giving us very gracious thank yous. <laughs> Basically, thank you. And yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> thank you. And I, I also wanted to thank you for all of the work that you did on that bridge and on your amendments. And I, I really appreciated the fact that you pushed to try and bring this perspective to the council table. Um, so thank you for that. I have a question about smart streetlights, which is how smart are they? Like, what are we, what are we talking about here? <laughs> um, well, if you had asked me two months ago, I would have probably a more favorable answer than I, I do this month. So um, we, for all of our new streetlights that we're installing, uh, we're making sure that they have the capability to accept a sensor or a node. Um, uh, specifically, it's a seven pin NEMA socket. I don't even know what that means, but that's what I'm told what it's called. Uh, and the idea is you can plug in a little doohickey that will do things for you. Um, so in, in probably the most basic sense, what this is often used for is a photovoltaic cell, right? So a, a light sensor that tells the light to turn on or turn off when the sun is up or sun is down. Um, but you can actually nowadays with, you know, connected, um, you know, if, especially if it's uh, cell enabled or connected to fiber optics, you can also start to measure other things. Um, and, you know, there are all kinds of sensors out there. I'm told there are sensors for air quality. There are sensors that can help do counts. There are any number of, of things. Um, from my vantage point, the thing that my team and I are looking into when it comes to smart streetlights is really reporting out on the functionality of the streetlight. Is the streetlight working or not? So not just is, does the light switch on and off, but if the light isn't working, if it's not drawing power for it to report that to us and notify us and that way we can deploy um, city staff to fix the light without having to rely on people telling us that it's not working. Um, so the reason why I kind of started off saying that my impressions have changed a little bit is that a lot of this technology is fairly nascent. It's still in development. Um, so on the first Ashley project, there are roughly 75 new streetlights that went in that were equipped with these sensors. Uh, and we just found out last month that about a dozen of them went bad already, um, which, you know, within the first couple months, six months of deployment is not a very good track record. Now, um, we are we working with the manufacturer on getting those replaced. We're hopeful, you know, that those will be replaced at no cost and you know all of that. But you know, we we are a little nervous about how reliable they will be in the long run if they've already experienced this problem and after a short duration of time, or if it was just a bad match. So, what we are probably going to do is look to other tech. Well, so first of all, the the 
resolution before staff uh, is to prepare an estimate for council's consideration as part of the next budget process. Um, we will probably, at least on our end, think of a couple different types of technology or different vendors or different products to test side by side to see which performs the best for our needs if council decides to, to fund this. Um, but that's the intent, right? Um, some of the other things that uh, we're possibly interested in as well are the ability to alter the lights, perhaps to make them more dark sky compliant, right? So for example, you can have lights dim um, and then maybe brighten as pedestrians approach. Um, there's, you know, there's trade-offs with all of that. So we want to be very mindful about how we move forward. But those are some of the smart city capable functionality that we're looking for when it comes to street lights. Awesome. Thank you. That's super helpful. I recently read this somewhat alarming story about some smart street lights in San Diego that uh, had were ca had cameras and were camera enabled, like the cameras are recording and it, I that didn't sound great to me. So all of this sounds great. <laughs> Sensors. That is not what we are contemplating. Awesome. That's good to know. Um, cool. Other questions, comments about any of the updates? All right, we are having a quick meeting tonight. Uh, so I think we're moving on to liaison reports. Uh, any commissioners who specifically serve as liaison to another body or organization are invited to provide brief reports. Commissioner Hall. Yeah, so uh, I at the Commission on Disability Issues, there's been some people uh, talking about the uh, challenges that some people with disabilities in particular are facing with uh, snow removal and that they're getting ticketed for it, but they can't do it and they end up having to go to court and stuff. So I do know they are putting together some kind of committee to look into this and they may be in touch with the Transportation Commission about this, but yeah, they're just looking for ways to handle this because it is a real problem that there are people that just aren't able to actually remove the snow. And I know, yeah, Snow Buddy has definitely been talked about in this discussion, though. Yeah, I know they aren't, li they're limited. They do not cover the whole city for, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to bring that up and uh, still looking for someone to replace my role. I just, yeah, I mean, it is difficult to do these two meetings almost back to back and I'm looking for someone else to take it on. And I do know also the, uh, yeah, like that's part of why I brought up the uh, thing with the alternates that even if someone else comes on, it can be challenging with those two meetings back to back to always have someone and well, almost back to back, I should say it's. And uh, yeah, I know I had brought this up before and yeah, if I had, I had almost missed uh, yeah, the December meeting and that's when we had previously asked about this. So anyway, that's, I guess all I was gonna bring up. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Smith. Good evening and thank you, uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair. Just wanted to let folks know that we are continuing to run reduced service, uh, unfortunately, but it the, the reduction that we did uh, has been very helpful uh, for staffing. We've been able to reduce our overtime and the ask of our employees uh, significantly, so we uh, have a much much healthier uh, work schedule uh, while we continue to recruit. Uh, we have a six-week training program and we have some graduates coming out just this Friday. Uh, we continue to have the problem that pretty much exists everywhere uh, in finding new recruits. Uh, we do have another class planned, but only have managed to, to find three candidates for it. So uh, we are committed to adding back service as soon as we can. Um, and we appreciate everybody's patience in the interim uh, and just wanted to, to let the commission know that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one question is, I will say, I mean, I get your need to reduce service and stuff, though some of the reductions, I mean, some of them it is just taking frequency off at already frequent route, but some of them leave significant gaps. Like I think there's one on the 24 that leaves a 90 minute gap in the evening. And then 
there's one, well, not as bad. It still leaves a 30 minute gap right in like the morning rush hour on the 23. Has there been any effort to perhaps refine, refine these schedules a bit so that the, uh, the, the reduction in service is more evenly spread out or do you anticipate getting this back up to normal before that's more of a consideration? Because I do think the service uh, reductions, even if it's the same about, it's it's more disruptive if there are big gaps in the schedule that are just random gaps. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, our goal would be to have the service back up and running uh, rather than focus on trying to, to re-time out and recut um, the routes to, to spread those uh, spread those routes out. Um, there's a, a significant amount of work involved in, in fixing those issues and how the buses are connected and, and tied together. Um, our, our goal is to have that up and running uh, faster than, than it would make sense to go into that level of detail with uh, the reduced service. Other liaison reports? Commissioner Hadamaki. Sorry, I'm not a liaison, but the agenda topic about transportation mapping and data dashboards, is that um, gonna be kind of a, just provide materials or? I think it was just materials. Okay. I, had, I had been pestering, I had been pestering Raymond for data on behalf of some Twitter people. And um, he kindly assembled this sort of list of all of the different, um, resources that are available for people to play with of city data yeah there's a lot of great material in there I hope everyone yeah takes a look yeah I and my, my apologies how to uh, commissioner how to I, I did mean to highlight that and i did uh, gloss over it so thank you for for bringing that up uh, one thing i will note on that uh for those of you who haven't had a chance to explore the links uh, i just found out uh, i think yesterday that one of the the new one-stop shop transportation maps uh, just went live. Uh, so I will send you a direct link to that uh, after this meeting. Um, uh, it has a lot of great resources. It has all kinds of sign layers and you know what a road is classified as and what the posted speed limit is and what, where there are sidewalks, where there are bike lanes. Um, so it's a great resource. It's a resource, quite frankly, I'm gonna use on probably a regular basis. So awesome. I'll share that with you. I think, I think you'll find it very interesting and a, a good place for when you get questions about transportation. Thank you. I have a quick liaison report, which is that I have mentioned before, I'm working with um, members of the Independent Community Police Oversight Commission and the Human Rights Commission um, to put together a couple of joint resolutions regarding uh, traffic enforcement. The first one is about um, access to, to traffic stop data and transparency around traffic stops. And we'll be bringing a resolution next month uh, and just to sort of give you all a heads up so you know what you're going to be seeing, the idea is that um, each commission is going to have the same resolved clauses so that eventually we can sort of jointly hand over this resolution to city council. Um, but we're all going to have different whereases that reflect the missions and values of the specific commissions. So um, when we're when we're eventually discussing it, um, just to sort of have that awareness that the, the resolution is being crafted um, largely by the HRC and ICPOC um, commissions. They have a lot more um, direct experience trying to access and use that data um, and will be sort of, but, but I think transportation is also a relevant commission to be engaged with that. So that's gonna be coming next month. Actually, I'm not gonna be here next month. So maybe it's gonna be in two months. <laughs> um, we'll see, I'll see what we can do. Um, any other, I think, oh yeah, Commissioner Lee. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, the Planning Commission is still looking to update the Unified Development Code to remove parking minimums. I think that's what's relevant here. So I think that's going on in the next working session, although those are the second Tuesdays of the month. So I think it's going to be March 8th. Um, uh, obviously, I think it'll be important for you know parking uh, to be looked at as a you know encouraging different uh, alternative and non-motorized. Uh, 
transit and limiting the amount of parking that there is. So um, in any case, I think that that alongside EV charging stations, I don't know how I think the EV standards or looking at it per use. So we've seen a lot of exemptions for churches, for example, because they have one day where it's you know, a lot of use. So I think there's going to be some um, revisiting of the EV ordinance. Um, so those are the two that I had that is specific to uh, transportation from the planning side. Thanks. Thank you. Moving on to general commission member communication. So this is an opportunity for any commission member to share stuff that they want to share with us. Uh, yeah, um, Commissioner Lee. Um, this is for my edification. Um, so I heard from a citizen that um, they wanted to see uh, some type of pedestrian signaling device on Liberty out near Maple. Um, so they, it's, it's a nurses group that uh, works out over at a pediatric um, hospital or clinic. And they, they said that they've just seen a lot of, uh, they've seen people just getting uh, fender benders because of that. So um, they, they were like, can you bring that up? And so for my edification, what's the best avenue to kind of um, bring that up? There's already kind of a crosswalk sign, um, but they were like, is there any kind of signaling or additional, um, you know, pedestrian kind of awareness that I can bring. So, so what's the best way to bring that up? Yeah, Commissioner Lee, um, direct them to me. Uh, what we'll do is we would have one of our transportation engineers uh, look at the location and compare it against our crosswalk design guidelines. Um, and then, you know, that's a function of kind of the characteristic of the roadway, uh, the characteristic of the crosswalk, and, you know, what is the, the sort of preferred design for that. And so, yeah, we're, we're happy to, to evaluate any location and we do that on a pretty regular basis. Feel free to it. Perfect. I'll get you a picture location and then just a little bit about email you separately. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other comments. So next up call for agenda items. Um, I've already noted the one about crosswalk enforcement from uh, Lieutenant Sherba. Any other um, thoughts about future agenda items? And as a reminder, this is just an opportunity to put the idea out there. Um, we won't get into big discussion right now. Uh, Councilmember Briggs. This is less a uh, call for agenda items for, um, well, I'm just going to repeat my desire to, to talk about traffic calming, but I've mentioned that a few times. Um, but more broadly, to um, for the commission to be um, thinking about what items you want me to bring to council um, and, and move forward. So um, I would like to be in a, move forward as many things as, as I can on my time on council. So please take advantage of, of bringing things here that can, can move forward. So um, maybe we can add that to a future agenda. <laughs> yeah, well. that, sounds, that sounds great. I like that idea a lot. Um, and I feel like traffic calming, I know it's on our list of like future agenda items. I don't, I don't think we have it scheduled yet, but it's definitely where it's, I think it's on the list. Yeah. yeah, there are a couple of different things in that space that we're kind of behind the scenes working on. First is, as you know, the um, um, Vision Zero implementation strategy where we hired Sam Schwartz to come back and help us with that. Mm -hmm. One a part of their uh, scope is to develop a major streets traffic calming program. Um, so that would complement our existing neighborhood traffic calming street program. But then quite frankly, we have a little bit of a, not to overstate it, but a little bit of a crisis in the transportation calming program because our resources aren't matching the amount of demand that's there. So, you know, we, we just processed two uh, the last two months, uh, but there are 12 more in the queue and we're already out of budget this year. So at that pace, we would be six years out before we would get to that list. And that's assuming no new petitions come in. So what I've been instructed to do by senior management is develop a memo that brings this issue to account. Um, and that's something we're going to be working on here shortly. And we will CC the Transportation Commission on it as well. Um, I don't have solutions just yet, but it is something that you'll probably start seeing some more communications on in the not too distant future. Great. Thank you. Any other agenda items? 
Yeah, Chair Kleiman, if I could just kind of review what staff is anticipating, both from the work plan and just, you know, some of the other things that we're hearing about. So bylaw, bylaws amendment will come back. Um, then we have the street resurfacing and related projects. This is the kind of annual update that you get on those projects. We expect that to come next month. Um, there's also our first kickoff meeting of the Vision Zero uh, Implementation Committee is next week. So we will be able to report on that meeting to this group. Um, so my hope is to share the materials that were shared with that sort of subcommittee with you all so that you have them at your disposal. You obviously have a couple of representatives from this commission and Commissioner Boland and Commissioner Hadamaki uh, who uh, are invited to participate in that process and they can give you their impressions on how that's going. Um, and then the other one is the lower town study. We, I know you've been hearing this for a while, but we are expecting that to finalize and bring that back again, just as an informational item. Thank you. All right. So um, our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 16th uh, at 7 p.m. As I mentioned, I believe that I will not be at that meeting. There's, it's still up in the air. Um, but uh, our new vice chair, um, Commissioner Hadamaki, will be uh, running that meeting in my absence. And uh, I expect everything to be just great. Um, it's funny. I haven't had to miss a meeting in so long because I haven't been going anywhere two years. Um, so anyway, uh, if there are no objections, we will adjour adjourn tonight's meeting. All right. Um, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everybody.